What follows is a radio commentary I did in 1994. It is as current today as it was then, and as you'll see in a moment, over 2,000 years ago. A remarkable essay appeared in the August 31st, 1994 edition of the Wall Street Journal, entitled A Higher Authority on Taxes. It is a unique assessment of the just-passed Clinton tax package. The author, Rabbi Daniel Lappin, does something the dominant media culture would have hammered a Christian for doing. The rabbi states his conclusion in the very first paragraph, quote, The tax plan won't work because it contradicts specific and timeless principles expressed in the Bible, close quote. Golly! He rather methodically recites the biblical laws of taxation, telling the reader that the Bible is the key to understanding the historically valid principle which states that, Regardless of the level of taxation, folks will so arrange their affairs as to hold the national average government tax take under approximately 19.5%. That's the same 19.5% the Egyptians paid to Pharaoh over 3,500 years ago, and for the same reasons. And it's the same 19.5% a recent study indicates is still current. People have always resisted what they believe to be confiscatory taxation rates. What do scriptures have to say about our current tax rates? Quoting from Rabbi Lappin's essay, quote, Evidently, even the cruel scenario depicted in Samuel, earlier in the piece, could not envision a legitimate king claiming more than 10% of his people's produce, 1 Samuel 8.15. A king would impose higher taxes only upon his conquered enemies. Sure enough, in Joshua 17.13, the idea is put forth that heavy taxation is to be imposed only upon people for whom you do not care much. Close quote. The rabbi concludes with this timely warning to us all. Quote, Finally, consider Proverbs 12.24. It declares that the hands of the diligent shall produce wealth, but the lazy will be subject to taxation. According to an 11th century sage, these words warn that excessive taxation hinders productivity and comes to pass only through the laziness and indifference of citizens who decline to resist the oppression. In other words, resisting a government's instinct to tax requires vigilance and energy. As the prophet Samuel warned, if we fail to exert the necessary vigilance and energy, we shall only have ourselves to blame for the consequences. Close quote. The message is clear. If government wishes to remain at its current size or expand, to thoroughly detestable options, it should lower tax rates in order to grow the GNP so that its 19.5% take, as by force, represents a larger absolute number. Coming up to date, let me add an epilogue to this 1994 essay by asking why we continue to allow ourselves to suffer under a Marxist income tax better suited to a third-world dictatorship. There are several proposals to scrap the current politically corrupt and abusive income tax and replace it with a flat tax, or, my favorite, a national sales tax on consumption. Visit the website now on the screen to get the facts about the fair tax, and don't fall for the lies being broadcast by the friends and beneficiaries of the income tax. All that said, unless and until we get back to honest money, we will never return to anything resembling honest government. Having struggled through the terrible period when the phrase, not worth the continental, came into common usage, look it up at the site on the screen, the founders understood the dangers of unbacked fiat paper currency. Roger Sherman and others at the convention obligated the states to keep us from our current plight by inserting a now ignored mandate in the Constitution at Article 1, Section 10. The words in question are now on the screen. Let them burn into your brain. Here are the words of Thomas Jefferson on this subject. When the servants of the people are paid in something other than that which they themselves produce, the roles of master and servant will be reversed. By those words, Mr. Jefferson meant that if those who supported the operations of government
had to do so with real, sweat-of-the-brow effort and or equivalent value in some honest medium of exchange, i.e. money, the inclination would be for the people to refuse to allow more than they felt reasonable and proper to be extracted from them by their civil servants. Because we have stupidly allowed elected and unelected civil servants in the states to ignore their constitutional mandated Article 1, Section 10, the servants at the federal level are now creating all the, quote, money, close quote, to fund their misbehavior, allowing them to become markedly uncivil and outright abusive. The current toboggan ride into tyranny is the price we pay for that neglect.